Um, to those of you who don't know that, I am Rikke Berggren Påskesen and I am Educational Manager at Kubo Robotics. And next to me, we have Trine Petersen, uh, primarily working with digital marketing, mm-hmm. and she will answer questions and keep an eye on you guys today while presenting. I will start out uh, talking about the value of working project oriented and afterwards there will be a lot of focus on the new coding plus plus tactiles so there will be, be a lot of uh, coding examples and then I will also uh, show you some a few slides uh, in between and at the end I will show you lead you to our web page where you can download our Cooper project pack and see how we practice our assessment tool. So I will start out telling about uh, the pedagogical value of working project oriented in school. Uh, it's very much uh, a, it's very, very much a pedagogical approach that is different than Uh, the everyday approach that teachers normally practice in school. So you need either a whole day, you you need two or three days, or you can practice project-oriented work during a week in a summer school, or it can be uh, over a period of about six weeks, maybe you only have two hours uh, every Monday, but during six weeks. Um, the best is if you have a whole day or a, a range of days where you can run a project because you need to to prepare a lot of material and uh, to clean it away again and uh, have students to yeah students will forget sometimes what they work with and then they have to refocus on on what they were working with. But so I will recommend that. When you practice project work in school, it should be for a longer uh, period where you can focus on what you're doing. What what you're doing. Working project oriented with middle school, say about third to fifth class, uh, it's it's good to learn students about uh, problem setting, problem investigation, and uh, problem solving. So um, not to only uh, work theme oriented uh, uh, is also a possibility, but it's a good uh, period in the student's life to to learn them how to find a problem uh, that is real world oriented and uh, that they don't know the answer to before they start. The teacher has to set clear frameworks for what they should be aware of, what students should be aware of when they get started. And this is everything from time management, uh, how long time do we have, what is expected during this time. Um, There should be um, an acceptance of the problem that they choose to work with so that they don't get started on something that will will not uh, get um, approved in the end. Um, and there's there must be a clear uh, frame for the presentation, what is expected at the end of this project. And of course, there will be an evaluation. What will you as a teacher look for when you evaluate your students during this process? And here is also important to mention to students that uh, everything from storytelling to coding skills to academic skills, investigation skills, cooperation skills, all these things are kind, are um, embedded in this way of working. So this is also what, which criteria that we will look for when we, we will evaluate uh, the students. Um, and uh, this is uh, the very good thing about uh, project work because it's it's about holistic learning so that both the students who like very much to work with storytelling and design creating objects and uh, come up with with things using their imagination and creativity 
they are um, <clears throat> a big part of this way of working. And as well, the, the students that are more, say, academically oriented, who likes to study, read, investigate, research, uh, find, out of, find out things. Um, and when they cooperate with other kinds of learning styles uh, in the same group, then they can come up with some great things and really um, help each other and uh, uh, be creative uh, in this setting. So the teacher also needs to come up with an inspiring introduction to the students so that it can spark their curiosity, their fantasy and their engagement uh, in this period of working project oriented. So for instance, the teacher can come up with some, some examples. You can also choose a common overall theme to work with, for instance, cocoa farmers in Latin America uh, could be a theme. And then the students can research everything from how, uh, how is cocoa found um, in the field, uh, who collects the cocoa, what happens to the cocoa after the farmers have been collecting the cocoa, where does it end up, and, and so on. And then when, when learning students how to make a, a great problem, uh, it could be something, saying example, like uh, whether fair trade is uh, making a difference to cocoa farmers uh, in the world. And then the students can investigate what is fair trade? Are they helping cocoa farmers? How are they helping cocoa farmers and everything? So th this is just one example of starting out. It can also be an overall theme like environment, or it can be science, it can be history, it can be social emotional learning. That could be the old overall theme, so just so that students have a, a great frame for how to start out and get started themselves. Great. Okay, now I will um, start with uh, showing you the new Coding++ Plus Plus tiles. So this is how the package look like, Coding++. Plus Plus. And in here you find some very new different tiles. We have modulators, we have operators, different kinds of operators and variables. Then we have these tiles that are very important to work with. Uh, and I will tell you about these in a minute when we start the coding. Uh, where it's important to work with code syntax. If this, then that, else, something else here. And then we finish the conditional statement. I will show you in a minute when we lie the code. But this syntax you can also transfer to other coding languages uh, later on in school. And then we have the event tiles, we have small event tiles and we have big event tiles. So they belong to each other depending on which color it is. And then we have turn with degree and we have um, set speed with parameter, set speed or, or turn degree with parameter. I will also explain you that later on. And then we have the random tactiles here. So this is what you find in the box. Okay. Now I will start show you how I would recommend to start out with students. Um, today, I will primarily work with the blank map uh, because we will have a focus on the tiles. But when we talk about project work, it is obvious for students to design their own frame. Uh, we had this webinar last week about tinkering creativity and cross-curricular coding with Google. And here were some examples of how students can be given a frame for how to work open-ended and design, create, and experiment with material themselves to create a frame. 
And of course, I would recommend to do this. But today, I will primarily work with the blank map only to, to have a focus on the tiles. Okay. I will start out explaining the students about the modulator. You see, it's got different shapes here, so this prevents that the students will place uh, some tiles in a different or in, in a hole where the tiles is not meant to be. So, for instance, this can only fit in here. And uh, I will start out talking to students about what is a variable. A variable can represent everything from metal, it can be flu flu fluids, it can be um, stones like gold, silver, diamonds, or in an ed educational context, uh, it will typically represent numbers in math. And when we work with Kubo, we work with uh, primarily with variables representing numbers. So as a first step, Start out with the variable. It doesn't have any value from the beginning. This is what the students learn to set the value of the variable. Say we say that the blue variable is equal to five. And then I make my first line of code, embed the tiles in a function. I make use of the conditional statement. If blue variable is less than 10. Here I have decided that the value is five. Then I uh, make a command for the robot saying, if the value is less than 10, then Kubo must make a U-turn. Kubo must wait, wait five seconds and then speed up four squares. Else, next step in the syntax. Kubo must go back two steps and then turn right. I finish the conditional statement and I finish the function. So now the code say if blue variable is less than 10, then do this, else do that and finish the command. Okay, let's see. First step, we have to tell Kubo what the value is. So I place Kubo here. And this is a new feature to Kubo. Kubo is able to count to five, telling that the value is five. So now Kubo will memorize the line of code. Okay, let's see what Kubo decides to do. I follow the line of code up here. I place Kubo on play. If the value is less than 10, it is. Then make a U-turn, wait five seconds, and take one step ahead and run four squares and stop. Okay. This was Kubo's reaction. If I then decide to change the value of the variable, or we can also say manipulate the value of the variable, then I make use of this little tile, meaning more than, we also have the less than. But this is important to tell the students, you can only make use of this tile in your second step, not as the first step. Kubo has to know the value before you can start manipulating the value. Then I say, okay, five plus 10, because Kubo knows that the blue variable is five. So I place Kubo here. Five plus 10, Kubo counts, intents and
in ones. So now we have tens and ones. If we have over a hundred, Kubo would count hundreds, tens, and ones. Okay, let's see what Kubo does. Now the value is 15. The value is not less than 10. Kubo will do this instead. Two, two steps back and then turn right. Okay, this is a good way to start out with the students to work with the modulator to change and to um, work with the value of the variable. And for this, we have a worksheet where students can read themselves about the tiles and also what are they called, the tiles, learning the new vocabulary. Uh, and here are some examples of how they can calculate themselves. What will the answer be? Okay. This was the first example. And there will be a lot of tiles on the table, uh, normally when students start to work with the tiles, because they will both work with, with, with the coding tiles, coding plus plus tiles, and coding plus plus tiles. So there will be a range of tiles on the table. Now we have another activity. You, okay, there is a design here on the map. It's not totally blank. It's North America. And here I introduce some other tiles. We work with speed. Now I set the speed to eight. In the box we have from zero to 10. When we work with high numbers, then it means high speed. And uh, it's also possible to work with minus numbers. Uh, then it's very slow. But now I loop four times. I would like Kubo to go two steps ahead and then turn 15 degrees three times. Finish the loop and finish the function. So I make Kubo memorize the code. I set the speed to eight. I loop and repeat four times. Go two steps ahead. Turn 15 degrees three times. Remember to finish the loop and finish the function. Let's see what Kubo does on the map. Let's see, Kubo moves a little faster than usual and then who turns 15 degree. So combining this with storytelling, Kubu can be looking around uh, in the world, in this case in North America, looking for which city to visit. It can also be, if you start out using this map, uh, Kubu visit Los Angeles, and then afterwards you take a blank map like this and have students uh, create or design, draw a map uh, of uh, a park in Los Angeles. And then Kubu can navigate the park in Los Angeles. Kubu can research population, research culture from Los Angeles or from North America, and research uh, habits, animals. Uh, there are endless opportunities for how to work this academically. Academically. So now I put this away and just to to show you when it what it what it can look like when you work with students. Uh, for instance, it's also a good idea to dress up Kubu. Here we have Kubu placed on Africa. Kubu is an explorer investigating the cities in Africa, or Kubu can be be dressed up as a, a hunter uh, from a cultural well-known uh, story, or Kubu can be dressed up as a doctor from a real-world scenario in a hospital setting. So it can be just as much working uh, with character and cultural storytelling as a told from the beginning, 
some students like very much to to work with character and storytelling, dressing up Kubu, work with design, work with imagination, and and then maybe another part of the the same group like to investigate uh, and research the country, the population, um, and so on. And when this gets combined, then students can can develop a great project. And uh, here you can see uh, we have run Kubu Global Citizen Explorer in uh, a school in Udense. This is a small project work, but it's just to see how it looks like. Uh, the students have designed their own map. One group have designed um, they have designed a tech park from New York. <laughs> so Kubu is navigating the tech park, and they are making some wonderful belonging code to the storytelling. And another group has designed a park from us, no, from Africa. Here's from Africa. They have designed a local park and then they write about the special reptiles, the animals and uh, the conditions in this country. And they tell about why did Kubu travel to Africa because uh, Kubu needed to experience something new. And th then they create this storytelling belonging to the code and belonging to the scenario. So there's a lot of different um, uh, students' abilities uh, at play in, in this context. And in the middle, you can see uh, they are, the students are presenting their project and the other groups listen to the presentation. So we go around in the classroom and listen to uh, the different presentation in the groups. Great. Then we continue with the tiles because we have some other very exciting tiles in the package. We have the event tiles. And just to show you, when you make use of the event tiles in the code, they will look different than the ones, the ones you place on the map. Now I make a loop and I make a conditional statement saying, okay, the loop starts three times. Kubu must read this conditional statement. If Kubu meets a star, this tile, the event tile, can also mm, be this one. There's no design on this tile, so students can draw themselves on this tile. So they can draw a monster, or they can draw a strawberry, or something that has a role in uh, the scenario. So if Kubo meets a monster, let's say it's a monster, or now we are talking about project work. So if Kubu meets a, a tech guy, then Kubu must turn left, run three square and run three squares. Else, Kubu must choose a middle speed, run two squares, finish the conditional statement and remember to finish the loop and finish the function. So, now, it's important to explain to students that we both have the big tile and the small tile. The small tile can only be used on the map, not in the code. And the big tile is only to be used in the code. You cannot use the orange tile together with the blue tile. We have some small orange event tiles belonging to this one. This one was orange and we have some red ones as well. Okay, let's see. Kubu memorizes the code. Loop, repetition three times. If there's a star or tech guy, then turn left, run three squares, else choose middle speed and run three squares, one, two, three. Finish the conditional statement, finish the loop, and finish the function. Now Kubo have memorized all this line of code, 
So I place Kubo on the play tile. Kubo will search for the events. There's no event at the first step, so he will run three squares. Then there's an event. Okay, Kubo turns and run. There's another event. Kubo turns and runs. There's an event, but I told Kubo only to turn three times. So here I make Kubo stop by making use of a loop. If I choose not to make use of the loop, I can, instead I can make use of a recursive function. Meaning that all this line of code will also be within this single tile. So this must be repeated when Kubo reach this tile. Now, if I choose to do this line of code, then Kubo will have a little different behavior. Let's see, replace Kubo on play. Kubo looks for events. There's no event. Okay, I run three squares. I repeat, there is an event. I turn and run three squares. There is an event. I turn and run. There is an event. I turn and run. And then Kubu will keep going. And this is more or less endless. Kubu will be doing this, repeat this, because we have make, made use of recursive function. So I haven't told Kubu to stop. But by making use of the loop, I can say to Kubu, OK, you have to do this three times. And then Kubu will stop. Right. This was the event tiles. If you guys have any questions during all of this, please feel free to uh, write them to us in the chat. We'll make sure to answer them as well. Great. Now I will show you a different kind of activity. And this is actually uh, an activity that has been made from our partner in the Middle East. They have created this wonderful example that is also very suitable for working project oriented because it's very real world oriented. This is about Kubo as a superhero doctor. So Kubo is dressed up as a doctor. And the story behind is that Kubo has traveled all the way from Wuhan to show us proper techniques of washing hands. There's a belonging code. So the map here that is designed is uh, the thread, the, the virus that we all know uh, at the moment. And then uh, the doctor comes as a superhero to tell us, okay, uh, how to wash our hands. So now we make this code. And here I make use of, you, you know, uh, the basic coding tiles, our coding plus tiles, and our coding plus plus tiles. The plus plus tiles are merely the green and the orange function in this case. Um, the speed degree uh, are from coding plus. So here I make use of a subroutine. We have the orange function. Let's have the doctor memorize the function. This 
this was the first line of code. And then the second function. Students can also tell about the tiles. When, when Kubu memorizes the tiles, they have time telling about each tile. What does this mean? Now we place Kubo on the plate tile. Let's see the reaction. Kubo runs three squares. He turns left and turns 90 degrees, run two squares, turns 90 degrees, run three squares, spread the hands, scrub the hands, spread the hands, and run two squares, turn, and then 90 degrees, washing hands, and then end up, rinse the hands. So this is a great example of uh, a process that is going on here in a real world situation um, in a hospital setting. The doctor from the hospital, Kubu is dressed up as a doctor. You can also wear a hat if you would like to, or a mask. In this case, of course, it would be obvious with a mask. And uh, students at the same time learning, reading about, and researching about uh, the virus. What, what, what is, where does it come from? Uh, where is Wuhan? Uh, geography, learning about China. Why did all this start and, and why did it affect uh, all the world? Uh, so there's a lot to research here. And at the same time, they can talk about uh, this habit that we all have to do at the moment of washing hands when they start in school again. Great. Then I will show you a last example of some of the tiles that we have not yet been using today. Here we have the random tiles. So I start a function using the basic tiles, and then I make use of the random tile. When we make use of random, it means that Kubu will either decide to do this, that, or this, depending on what is in between these two tiles in the code. Now I start out line three tiles, and then I finish the function. And then I place the play tile. Um, so when Kubu randomly, it, it, this code means that Kubu will randomly pick either this uh, decision, this decision, or this decision. Uh, I don't know beforehand what Kubu will choose to do. There is three possibilities here. So let's see what Kubu chooses to do. Kubu still wears his uh, doctor suit and now he turns red. So I think I will use another Kubu. And my argumentation right now at the moment is that Kubu still wears his doctor suit because it's not that it's not that a good idea to make use of random in a hospital setting because a random, randomly behavior means that you cannot predict the robot's behavior. If we have a robot in a hospital setting, it makes sense to have a predictable behavior because uh, you, 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 you need to know uh, if the robot brings blood tests from the patient's bed to the laboratory, the robot needs to have a specific behavior. You cannot just have a robot randomly choose another behavior. But if in storytelling we work with Kubo acting as a night watchman, as a detective, then it would be a great idea to make use of the random tiles because then we cannot predict the behavior of the robot. Let's see. Thank you. 
Okay, I follow the code here. It takes one step ahead, one step ahead, turns left and take one step ahead, and then randomly chooses to go back and then make a U-turn and finish. Okay, let's see if I do it a second time. One step ahead, turn left, one step ahead, and goes back once again and makes a U-turn. Let's see what Kubo will do the third time. And, oh, wow, three times back. That's very good. When you work with probability, we have a worksheet where students can write down what is the probability that Kubo will, will actually choose this tile three times in a row. But let's see the fourth time. And then here Kubo desired to turn 180 degree and then make a U-turn. Let's try one last time to see what he chooses. <laughs> And, ah, then Kubo chose the last tile here. He ran four squares and then ended up making the U-turn. In math, it makes good sense to work with the uh, random tiles because you can work with probability. If I choose to um, now I'm searching for a tile. If I choose to embed two times, run three squares, then there is 50% chance that Kubu will choose this behavior and 25% chance that Kubu will choose this behavior. But now there's only about 33% chance, like that. <laughs> um, and then you can work, you can you can place two from these tiles, one from these tile, and then uh, two from these tiles. You can have several tiles within the same code, and then students can work with with probability. And we have a belonging worksheet for that as well. Great. This was. The tiles that you meet in the Coding Plus Plus package. And of course, today they are combined with the basic coding tiles and with the Coding Plus tiles so that we have endless possibil possibilities for making uh, imaginative, creative, and fun code. Um, and now I would like to show you what you can find on our web page because if you're on our front page, look on the lesson plan. Uh, if you go into our lesson plans, and then you choose your language, of course. Today we choose English. And on this page, you find all our lesson plans coding. You find our coding plus and you find our coding plus plus. There's a lesson plan and there's a project pack. Today we focus on the project pack and if we go into the project pack, this is the most interesting pack when it comes to the coding plus plus tiles. But the lesson plan is important because the lesson plan introduces variables and conditions. In here, um, if we scroll a little down, we have these different thumbnails. And if you click on teacher notes, you will find the, all the notes for the teacher, what to prepare, examples of themes to work with, uh, the timing and uh, the, the, the different content, the set, the setup before you start 
uh, out a project and all the things you need to know about. And then if you click on teacher grading sheets, then there's four belonging grading sheets for how to evaluate a project. And these are great to use uh, when you somehow must evaluate your students' group work because this can be difficult. This is not that easy always what to look for. But for instance, uh, there are criteria to look for when evaluating students on their group work, their way of cooperating, communicating, and uh, make their individual parts uh, and responsibilities in the group. What what can you be look What can you be looking for? What can you say to the students when you give them feedback? And it can also be everything from being prepared when you start, uh, uh, being on time. Uh, do we do we have we been using all the time we have been giving, and everything. And then there's a presentation grading rubric for it can be it can be a good idea to to read aloud some of these criteria before starting out uh, with the students so that they know what they will be uh, assessed about or what the teacher will be looking for uh, what is a great presentation it's about talking clearly it's about looking at your audience, it's about uh, taking responsibility and uh, all these things. And then we have a programming rubric that is also very interesting for what should I evaluate when I look at the student's programming part belonging to the project. Have they used varied tiles? Have they been using all the tiles? Uh, could they use more Coding Plus tiles uh, to make it uh, fun and engaging. Uh, did they use um, a variable in a creative way? And uh, all such things uh, they can have feedback on. And of course, when you run uh, this project, uh, you don't need to have Coding Plus tiles. You can have the basic tiles, you need the basic tiles, and then you can have the coding plus plus tiles is one possibility. You can also start out a project only by making use of the basic coding tiles uh, so that the students get the idea of working project oriented. And then later on, when they are ready for it, because coding plus plus tiles are the more advanced concepts when it comes to coding, working with variables and conditions. So the students of course, need to be ready um, working with the tiles. So this is a programming rubric, and then we have a story writing rubric. Um, have the have the group um, been writing an interesting uh, and engaging story that fits the scenario and that fits the belonging code? Uh, which criteria to look for is good to ask the literacy teacher who knows everything about story writing in language. Um, and of course, in such a project work, it's great if you have the possibility, both a math teacher, language teacher, history teacher, geography teacher can cooperate. They don't necessarily need to be there all four at the same time, but when you have your geography lessons, um, in your schedule, you can work with population or you can work with um, size of a country. And when you then have your language lesson, you can work on your story belonging to the project. And when you have math, you can work with variables and the code. So in that sense, it's possible to also uh, fulfill a project work in a normal schedule, in a normal school schedule, but then teachers need to agree on how to to uh, work on this and cooperate on this. But uh, as I said in the beginning, I would recommend to use either a whole day, uh, two or three whole days, a summer school, or it can be a period of six weeks um, doing two, three lessons per week during six weeks. So this is um, 
different ways of of uh, how to go about project work in a school setting. Um, yes. Um, I think this was the most. Um, so the point here at the end is that we have a great assessment tool for how to evaluate a project like this and uh, which criteria to look for. And um, the wonderful thing uh, and the academic value is as well to the ability to combine technology, coding, literacy, math, uh, you, you both have uh, this holistic learning uh, where you talk to students that uh, love um, working with language, story writing, and the students who love to work with math, learning about variables, learning to create code and uh, make uh, exciting uh, code. You can be very creative uh, also by only using uh, or focusing on the code. So... There's a lot of um, possibilities of uh, working project-oriented and to embed technology and coding in project-oriented work. And I suppose and I hope that uh, some of you guys have some questions here now. So please prepare your questions and uh, send them along if you have some. Give you guys a couple of minutes to to write any questions you might have, and then it can also be if you would like to have a repetition of some of the things I was showing or something that uh, I didn't quite get. That can you explain that one more time or something? So right now it seems like we don't have any questions. We'll give you a couple of minutes if you want to. Unless it's because it's. Yeah, there, there can be a lot of um, teachers or educators who watch the webinar afterwards, of course. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Judy, thank you. But uh, on our web page, you can also download these um, dresses for Kubo. Um, here's a design that the can students really can, from the light. can print out. Here? Can you there see? There we it? go, yeah. Okay. That the students can print out and design themselves and dress up Kubo. I've just made a basic doctor suit today, but of course, they can. Uh, make of a, a superhero or uh, they can make a worker, they can make whatever they would like uh, using our customs. Um, so actually, you, I would recommend four students to work in a project and not more than four students. It can also be two students, but three or four students would, would be the most optimal, I, I think, because then... Okay. Then you can both work with the coding, the tiles, and you can work with the story setting, the design of the scenario, the story writing part, and uh, you get to combine these different skills in the same project. So the students learn from each other uh, also when, when working in groups. Okay, so we have... Uh, I have Kubo Basic. Can I use it with Coding++ plus plus text? And the answer is yes. Coding++ plus plus tech tiles. Tech tiles, yeah. So you yes, can, sure. yes. You, you need the basic uh, coding tiles. Uh, it, you, cannot, it's, <clears throat> you cannot only have this package and then start uh, the coding part. You need the basic uh, coding tiles uh, also. But yes, you can use the basic set with the coding plus plus tag tiles. Definitely, definitely. And then, yes, the video will be sent to you guys around an hour after the webinar ends. So you can see the webinar again and the presentation as well. 
if for some reason you don't receive it, feel free to email me and then I can send you the link. I'm just going to write my email in the comments here, but you should receive it uh, around an hour after the webinar ends. And then Lena asks if we can uh, go through the event tiles again real fast to explain the event tiles. Yes, we can do that. Uh, let's find the event tiles. They are... Mm. And for the research project, if you email me the details about that one as well, we can... Uh, we can talk about that. So oh, okay. if, I'm if I make a very basic code here, um, it's a good idea if, if you if you start out very basic with the event tiles, it's a good idea to have a starter for Kubu. There must be something to trick Kubu uh, at the beginning of the code and then start lying the conditional statement. If Kubo meets an event, then Kubo must turn right, set speed up, and run three squares. Else, Kubo must, no, turn left, Else, Kubu must turn right. And then I finish the conditional statement and I finish the function. <clears throat> I can also take one side away to make it even more uh, basic. So now I say I start with the function so that Kubu is able to memorize the code. Kubu starts taking two steps ahead when he is placed on play. Then he's looking for an event, and if there's an event, then do this behavior. If there's not an event, then do this behavior, and then finish the code. So if I start out here and place one event tile here, let's see what Kubu does. I let Kubu memorize the code. So while you're memorizing, we have another question about the tech event tech tiles, and that is if we can use two or three event tech tiles together. Yes, uh, you can. In the example I before, I used three blue event tiles. It is also possible to make a code where you make use of a blue and an orange event tile, but I, I will just come back to that afterwards. Now I place Kubo on play. Kubo takes two steps ahead. If there's an event, there's not. Okay, then Kubo will turn right. Okay, that wasn't an event. If I then place an event here, Kubu takes two steps ahead. If there's an event, there is an event. Then Kubu turns left and run three squares. Great. Okay. And for the question of uh, several events, you can easily make use of uh, more events of the same color, but it has to somehow be systematically placed depending on the code. Because if I, if I just place them somewhere on the map and not look at the code, Kubu might never reach this event. Um, I can make use of different colors. That depends on the code because if I make a shorter code, um, then I can use yet another conditional statement within the same line of code. Mm. 
to make it clear, I can start the next conditional statement here, uh, making use of the <coughs> the orange event. Can you see all the tiles on the screen? Yeah. Okay. So here I can make my second uh, conditional statement. So in that sense, it is possible to make use of uh, different um, event colors in the same uh, line of code. I can also decide to make use of another color if I make um, another function, then I can, um, as a first step, it's, it's easier to explain to students by making use of different colors of functions, because then we have the first line of code up here. Uh, Uh, the green conditional statement working with the blue event tile, and then I have the orange conditional statement that I can decide to embed here in this line of code. So then I just need to memorize this line of code as a first step, because then Kubo knows what that means when Kubo reaches the play tile. Um, so you can also choose to leave out the the, the, the negative uh, conditional statement uh, in, in your first example. You can just say, if this, then that, and then finish. So yeah, there's a lot, lots of ways to... Endless possibilities. Yeah, to work with these event yes, tiles. So yeah, you can work with several, or you can just work with one, and you can implement the different colors into each other. So there's a bunch, bunch of ways. Yes. Definitely. So do you guys have more questions? I think we answered the ones you already had. If not, I think it's time to say, see you next time. If you guys have any um, preferences for topics that we should cover in these webinars, please let us know as well. Yes, then you can let us know. Mm -hmm. We will also very much like to know if you have the pos possibility for trying out a project, one of our Kubu project packs in your school. Uh, it could be wonderful to know about it if you can send some pictures or just tell about how it went. Yeah. It, uh, because uh, that's always nice to know from practice what's going on out there. We are... Um, operating in practice ourselves, but we would also like to know the feedback from you. How does it work in the classroom? Of course. Yeah. But yeah, so I think that was it for today. We will say a huge thank you today. Yeah. Both Trina and I, and uh, have a <laughs> nice day and see you next week where our, uh, this uh, webinar is about Kubu maps next week. Yes. Okay. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.